Um, my name is Kelly Shrine. I am the Alaska State Teacher of the Year 2022. And um, I currently teach a fifth grade class in Anchorage, Alaska. Okay, thank you. So I um, have a little presentation kind of just overall about Alaska. And then I also have a, um, I have a book with me. I didn't know if we would have time to read the book. I, of course, as a teacher, love books. Um, but I think to save time, I could show you a few pages and then share my screen and kind of give you a glimpse into Alaska. Yep. Um, but right now I'm just gonna turn my computer so you can see the uh, Kenai River here in Alaska where we catch oh, all of our fish. Oh, lovely. Uh, students, uh, students, you can see the live images of uh, a river. Uh, Kelly, could you please tell us that uh, what is the name of this river? Uh, the river is the, the Kenai River, um, and it leads up into the Russian River. And this is um, about two and a half hours outside of Anchorage, um, the city where I'm, I was born and raised and the city that I live in. And um, it's just a nice little getaway. This is where we come and we fish for salmon. Um, and it's just a, it's a nice, beautiful piece of Alaska. So you are enjoying uh, your summer time with your family. Yes, I am. I am. My children are still sleeping and I'm here with my, my dad's up and he just needs some coffee. So yeah, we're, we're enjoying it. Yeah, we are also <laughs> morning here, but um, what time is it there? Ah, it is almost uh, 30 minutes past eight o'clock. That means almost uh, evening time here. Pretty late. Well, thanks again for getting on so late for me. So I'll go ahead and start. Yes, please. Okay. So I just, um, and I'll try not to take too much time, but I wanted to show you guys um, this book. It's called Recess at uh, 20 Below. This is kind of just a little glimpse into um, what it's like to live in Alaska and go to school in Alaska and our kind of our weather during the winter. And this is by um, Cindy Alyad. And so of course, this is what our state looks like. Mm. Can you guys see okay? Um, I'm gonna show you some pictures of some children walking to school. It's kind of a long book, so I'll just give you some photos. They have all their snow gear on, <laughs> walking to school. We have a lot of these signs up on the road. Mm. You guys know what this is? <laughs> we have a lot of moose. So we have moose crossing signs on the road. I'll show you some more photos here. We have a lot of students who like to go sledding outside, of course, mm. in the winter time. Have to get all that gear on. It is it quite is unusual, fun. actually. It, it is unusual for us to experience the snow because the, the, the part of India where we are living is quite dry and uh, is typical weather conditions. It's so hot all the year. <laughs> okay, so I was wondering if you guys ever saw snow. And so it's more in the mountains or further away from where you are? Yeah, in only a little part of India uh, where uh, the people experience the snow. Other than that, uh, by and large, Indian people experience the dry weather conditions all through the 365 days. <laughs> okay, okay. So I'm glad that I chose this book. I should probably read some of it for you guys then. Um, I will say, let's see. Oh, this is a fun one. When it's cold, we have to be careful never to touch our tongue on something that's metal because it will stick. And this happens a lot. A lot of young children want to, you know, it, the metal on the playground is frosty and it lo looks really nice and they want to lick it and then their tongues get stuck and it's not good. So teachers have to come out and pour warm water on their tongue to get it off. <laughs> so yes. don't lick metal poles in Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> um when the wind blows, the snow gets packed hard and then we can break it into chunks like giant bricks. We stack the chunks to make forts that go high above our heads. Can you guys see that okay? Inside our forts, we keep nice and warm even when the wind is howling outside. 
So you'll see a lot of students building snow forts in Alaska during the winter time. They like to make tunnels and pop their heads out. Uh, we get a lot of uh, frost on our eyelashes. Playing hard means breathing hard. The moisture from our breath floats up to our faces and makes our eyelashes freeze. So here's a picture of that. You can see their frozen eyelashes. Sorry, I should have had this on, on my screen. I have the book. If it's colder than 20 below, we have to stay in for recess. And this is in Delta Junction. It's a city north of Anchorage. Um, the Anchorage School District keeps students in when it hits 10 below zero. This school stays in when it hits 20 below. Um, they had to stay inside because they had a visit walk across our playground. And they may look big and sweet and slow, but they are dangerous animals and they're really fast. So we don't get near moose. Nope. Our recess is always at noon because it is the sunniest time of the day in this part of Alaska, but it's not, not very bright in the winter. The sun rises and sets in just three hours and it barely peaks above the mountains. We go to school in the pitch black and come home in the pitch black. And if it's cloudy and snowing during recess, the sky gets darker even at noon and it feels like we should get flashlights out. Oh. So um, I'm sure, I, I'm not sure if you've heard, but in Alaska during the winter, it's dark the majority of the time. Um, and then in the summer, it's light most of the time. So what you see right now is um, similar to what you would see at um, one in the morning during the summer. It stays this light out and um, it can get really confusing when you're trying to sleep. But in the winter, it's pitch black a lot of the time, which is really interesting. Um, and then let's just see if there's any more. Their cheeks get cold. A lot of winter gear we have so where to stay warm, hats made out of animal fur to stay warm, boots, fur, warm snow suits, warm gloves, can't go outside, you'll get too cold. And they, they send them outside to recess with all their stuff on. And the classroom, this is funny because my classroom looks like this. Sometimes it's a mess after recess. Take students a long time to get get all their gear on and get it off and it's a long process. So I will share my screen if they're still, if we're still good on time, I'll share my screen. Okay, you can. It's just a quick little Alaska um, slideshow with information about my state. Again, I was born and raised here. So Alaska has a, a special piece of my heart. This um, picture in the middle is our Alaska flag. Has eight stars of gold on a field of blue. And I will explain what those mean in just a second. So where in the world are we? I wanted to do this because I have a lot of um, American students who do not know where Alaska is on a map and they live here. So I thought I would share with you where exactly where Alaska is. You probably know, but I'm just gonna do it anyway. Okay, so we are right here um, on many maps. They show the continental United States. So this obviously, you know, is the United States. And they'll show Hawaii and Alaska down here on maps. Okay, we're not an island down by Hawaii. And a lot of people think that because that's what it shows on um, a lot of maps of the United States. We're all the way up by Canada. And you can see that we're the largest state. <laughs> and then this is just kind of... Um, I was going to show you where I'm from. So this is Alaska and then Anchorage is this little blue region right here. And that's where I'm from. And I'm about two hours right now outside of Anchorage South. Sorry, I have to move this around. So here's our Alaska state flag. And it shows um, this represents the Big Dipper as a symbol of strength. 
It also shows the North Star, uh, meaning it's a symbol of Alaska's northern location. The ever constant star for the mariner, the explorer, hunter, trapper, prospector, woodsman, and the surveyor. And the blue background represents the sky, the sea, the lakes, and the wildflowers of Alaska. Um, and Alaska's state motto is North to the Future. And this motto was meant to represent Alaska as a land of promise. This is the Alaska State Seal. And I'm, I wanted to just briefly mention a couple of the pieces of the state seal and what they represent. It was designed in 1910 when Alaska was still a territory and not officially a state within the United States. You can see on the seal uh, fish and the, um, sorry, fish and seals and on the outer circle. And that sig signifies the importance of seafood and wildlife to Alaska's economy. Sorry, you might hear a boat go by. I hear a boat coming, it's a little loud. Rays above the mountains, of course, to represent the northern lights. We have all of those beautiful, um, during certain months in Alaska, dancing skies of different colors that called the northern lights or the aurora borealis. It's quite beautiful. Um, we have a farmer, a horse, three shocks of wheat to represent Alaska's agriculture and mining for gold and other Alaska natural resources. And then we have um, a train, which is one of our transportation, um, what's available for transportation. We still use a lot of tra uh, trains in, in the railroad system. Ships for transportation. And then of course there's trees on the state seal um, to represent our wealth of forests and trees. And you can see we have a lot of those. <laughs> And uh, this, I won't read all of this. This is just to show how big Alaska is. It's 586, I'm sorry, 586, 400,000 square miles and 1,479 miles in length. So if Alaska were to be put over the continental United States, it would um, be um, about a third of the United States. That's how big we are. Okay, and this is what I briefly touched on in the book um, about daylight. And this is a really, um, a really cool fact about Alaska. Um, we have in a land that's called the midnight sun and it um, was given to us when the sun, um, so, um, sorry, I'm, I'm just waking up here. <laughs> the sun can be seen at midnight during the Arctic and Antarctic summer. And so from March 21st to September 23rd, the sun is visible 24 hours a day at the North Pole. So in a city in Alaska called Barrow, there's actually a point in time during the summer where the sun doesn't set. It's really unique. So the sun will kind of, it'll rise and throughout the day it'll, you know, go down, but it won't ever go below the horizon. So it kind of dips moves and then rises again for the next day. So it does this and in that part of Alaska, um, it doesn't get dark at night. It's really cool, but again, can be hard to sleep. <laughs> and then of course, this is a photo of our Northern lights that you can see here during certain parts of the month or certain parts of the year during certain months. Um, the Aurora Borealis or the Northern lights is a natural light display in the sky. And it's caused by the collision of solar wind and charged particles in the high altitude atmosphere. Um, and the Aurora Borealis was named after the Roman goddess of dawn and the Greek name for the North wind, Aurora and Borealis by Galileo in 1619. And then, um, I had some interesting facts about Alaska. I'm actually not, oh, we're doing okay on time. Uh, here are a couple of pictures of glaciers that we have in Alaska. We actually have over 100,000 glaciers in Alaska. Um, I've been able to walk on one, but I know a lot of friends who go and walk on many more. 
Um, so a glacier is a large body of ice moving slowly down a slope or a valley. And a known for glaciers. Um, um, most well-known glacier is the Mendenhall Glacier. Um, glaciers can stretch over 122 miles in length. And glacial ice often appears blue because it's become very dense. Um, and actually the Kenai River where I'm at right now has really beautiful teal blue water. And that's because it's water is coming down off of the glacier. And then um, we have quite a few earthquakes in Alaska. Does India have a lot of earthquakes? I'm just oh, in fact, in fact, India is India, India is not under the zone of earthquake. I think uh, we uh, in the past, I think we had an history of earthquakes, but not too frequent. I think we are not under the zone of earthquake. Yeah. Okay, I was thanks. I was wondering. <laughs> Um, so we did have a, uh, actually we had an earthquake the other day, but it wasn't very big. It was just a little jolt and it was about four, a magnitude of 4.4. .4. Um, so it wasn't that bad, but we had a really big Alaska earthquake in um, March of 1964. And that's just um, one of the earthquakes that we're, that we're really known for. Um, it was the largest earthquake um, that the U.S. has ever recorded. Oh no, I closed out of uh, what I was doing. Can we see? Okay, there we go. So I had a magnitude of 9.2 and it shook for about five minutes. We had a lot of damage, of course, and there were lives that were lost. Um, of course, we had tsunami. Okay, so after that earthquake, there were tsunamis. Um, and during that earthquake, there were 131 lives that were lost um, and about $2.3 billion in property damage. Um, I didn't do my fishing in Alaska slide. I was really excited to talk about that, but I ran out of time. Um, and then just a couple quick facts, but we can also skip this and you just tell me, I could talk on and on about Alaska, is the willow, oh, I'm sorry, here it goes all these in here. It was a quiz, but we're not going to do a quiz. So the Alaska state bird is the willow ptarmigan. So there are three types of ptarmigan and all can be found in Alaska. The willow ptarmigan and rock ptarmigan um, and the white-tailed ptarmigan found in North America and can also be found in Scandinavia, Russia, and Northern Eurasia. So I have all these clicks in here. I'm just going to click through. <laughs> The Alaska state insect is a dragonfly, although I'd like to argue that it's really a mosquito because the mosquitoes here are insane and they are everywhere. And it's hard to do anything without putting some bug spray on. <laughs> Alaska state sport is dog mushing. Um, Nor so Northern people have used dogs to pull sleds for centuries. It was once a primary form of transportation in many parts of Alaska. Um, and then from this tradition came dog sled racing. And today it is a worldwide sport for both professional competitions and family recreation. And every year we do have an event in Alaska called the Iditarod. Um, there's lots of songs and celebrations and festivities around this dog race. Okay. Um, Kelly, Kelly, sorry. My name is Kelly Tiana. I am studying seventh grade. My hobbies are reading books, playing games, and watching TV. My life ambition is to become a software engineer. Can I ask you a question, ma'am? Yes. What is education system like in Alaska? I'm sorry, what was that? What is education system like in Alaska? Okay, so um, I know that, let's see, Alaska is such a wonderful place to get an education. Um, I, the Alaska Early Education System um, currently rates number nine within the nation, um, according to a study done by the National Institute for Early um, Education Research. Alaska has a strong um, 
has a strong uh, belief, I want to say, in early education, starting even before um, our students enter kindergarten when they're five and six years old. Um, we have many preschool programs um, because we know that research shows that children who are read to at an early age and um, whose parents or adults play math games with them, that they're more successful before they enter school. Um, and so we, Alaska is uh, well known for our preschool and um, education programs. Um, and then I do believe that um, we rank, I believe the, um, Secondary education, so high school ranks uh, and some elementary schools rank a little lower in the United States, and there are some achievement gaps, just like there are, uh, I, I believe, in, in any state, especially after COVID. So we do have our achievement gaps and things that we do need to um, tweak and adjust, but overall, I, I, I believe Alaska has a great education system in place and really hardworking teachers and, and bright students. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a really great state to get an education in. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for explanation. Uh, Jagadesh, it's your turn. Yes, sir. Hello, ma'am. My name is Jagadesh. I'm studying eighth grade at My hobbies are playing games and watching TV. My future ambition is to become an English teacher. Can I ask you a question, ma'am? Yes. What is Alaska ranked in education? Oh, I'm sorry. I think I touched on that in the last question as well. Um, so I I want to say that um, besides being ranked number nine in um, early education with preschool programs, I believe that um, I think the, the latest study I read was that Alaska ranks number 42 or number 43 out of all 50 states. So again, not the best ranking, but um, those are just statistics. And I um, I believe that Alaska has a, a really great education program. Um, specifically, um, we have over 436 uh, um, regular schools and then 68 alternative schools in, the, um, in Alaska. Uh, most students attend schools in um, a suburban area, larger city areas, and then there's about 18% of students that attend school in rural areas, um, areas that you can only get to by plane, um, and areas that are just not um, highly populated or accessible. Okay, nice to hear that. So, Lohita is... <laughs> Hello, ma'am. Thanks for giving this opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Lohita Girija. I'm studying ninth grade. I'm 14 years old. My hobbies are reading books, playing games, watching TV, and dancing. My future ambition is to become an English teacher. Can I ask one question, ma'am? Yes, absolutely. What subjects do students learn at school in your state? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so I'm an elementary school teacher, so I teach uh, kindergarten through sixth grade. And I teach all of the subjects except, um, you know, music and art and PE. I don't teach those subjects, but I do teach reading and math and history and science and um, and those those main content areas. I teach all of those to my students. So I the students will come in in the morning, and I'll maybe teach you know ninety minutes of reading, and then they'll have a break. They'll go to PE or they'll go to art or music. And then they'll come back and I will teach them math. And then after that, we'll do science or social studies. And then here um, in Alaska, we are really um, strong believers in teaching SEL as well. And that's social emotional learning and just working with kids on their feelings and how to regulate and manage their feelings and what to do if they get um, in a disagreement with someone and how to talk out those problems because we have seen um, a rise in students not being able to do that. So we have incorporated that into school. So I also teach them how to work out their problems and what to do if they're in a situation that's stressful. So Kelly, I, I have to tell you one thing, being a primary teacher, I think we have the responsibility of teaching all subjects. So uh, 
teaching all subjects means it requires a lot of energy and a lot of knowledge in fact we have to acquire a lot of knowledge in each and every subject that we need to teach so i think that teaching at primary school is tougher than teaching at secondary school that's what i feel personally do you agree with me i agree oh absolutely teaching grammar can be very difficult i mean i will be honest i was i'm obviously born in English speaker. English is my first and only language that I speak. And I still look at grammar lessons and think, huh, I wonder why this pattern is placed this way. Or I wonder um, where, you know, this word came from, where it was derived from. And so I'm, I'm constantly learning, even as an adult myself, um, while I'm teaching grammar, how that all flows into into our language. So I agree that that's a really difficult subject to teach. And it's important that teachers have that knowledge and are constantly going to professional development and training and learning because we have to reach our students in that way yes. so they can write and read. Yes, and uh, Kelly, we have one more student. One more student is waiting for us. Uh, Sai Surya, are you ready? Yes, sir. Yeah. Hi, ma'am. I am Sai Surya. I am studying seventh grade. I am 12 years old. My hobbies are reading books, playing games, and hub reading books, playing games, and watching TV. My future ambition is to become a police officer. Can I ask you a question, ma'am? Oh, what languages has spoken in Alaska? Oh, that's a really good question. So mainly Alaskan. So Kelly, 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 if you don't mind. So, is that good? Oh, oh, sorry. I think I had my book on, on my computer. You can hear me? Okay. Okay. Yeah, that is a really good question. So um, the main language that is spoken in Alaska, um, about 80%, um, give or take a percentage or two, is English. But there are over 20 different Alaskan languages that are spoken here um, by Alaskan Native groups. And a couple of those are Klingit and Aleut um, and Athabascan. We have so many different languages that are spoken in Nupiaq um, by Alaskan, um, Alaskan people. And then we also have Spanish speaking cultures here and we have um, Pacific Islander languages that are spoken here. We have a lot of Samoan families that come here and so we have Alaska so diverse in language it's such a it's such a wonderful place to be so lots I mean lots of languages that are spoken here okay it, it looks hi hi ma'am would you allow me to ask a question yes please what did does the name Alaska mean oh that's a really good question Alaska is actually um, an Aleut word that means the great land, the great big land. And it um, so it came from the Aleut language originally, meaning the mainland or the great land. And then our state nickname is the last frontier. So the word Alaska does come from the Aleut language from our Alaskan people. That's quite interesting. Uh, Bagasri. It's your turn. Yes, sir. Hello, ma'am. My name is Bhagyashri. I'm studying ninth grade. My hobbies are reading books and playing games. Should I ask one question, ma'am? Yes, absolutely. Which school district in Alaska pays the most? That's a really good question. So I live in the Anchorage School District, and that is the largest school district in Alaska. I do believe that we are the highest paying school district, the Anchorage School District. We also have a lot of really nice benefits, um, in my opinion. And um, Alaska, fun fact, is actually the uh, one of the highest paying states in the United States. So teachers average about $75,000 a year living here and teaching here. It is an expensive state to live. It is very expensive to live here. Um, I went to buy strawberries the other day for my kids and it was about $13 for a thing of strawberries. So although we do get paid really nicely here, the cost of living is really high here too. <laughs> yes. 
what kind of schools are uh, famous or familiar or popular in your uh, region a public school or private schools which schools win the hearts of the parents that's a really good question um so obviously the majority of our schools are public schools, but I have seen a lot of um, families, uh, including close friends that I have who have been uh, have started to take their children to private schools. And um, those include um, a lot of Christian schools here, they'll take their students to Christian schools here. And then um, we have a lot of alternate um, al alternate schools like charter schools here, but those are also still a part of the Anchorage School District. So um, that's a really good question. It, I mean, we have a lot of families that love the public schools, and then we have a lot of families who have just kind of grown apart from that, and that's okay too. And I, I think that the teachers are, are doing their best to make public schools and private schools um, a fun and successful learning environment for their students to be. Okay, thank you. To wrap up this session, uh, could you please give me a final message to my students? Sure. I just want to tell you guys that I think you're doing an amazing job. I mean, I haven't been with you obviously very long, and this is the first time that I've met you guys, but I, I love that you're just able to hop on and you're willing to hop on so late in the evening before you go to bed and listen to a teacher in Alaska share um, her experience with her state. And I just keep working hard, you guys. I, I can already tell that you're respectful hardworking, dedicated learners. And I, I love to see that that's happening even so far away from where I am in the education system. Um, so good job, you guys. And I appreciate you taking the time to hear what I had to say. Okay, thank you. And then I might lose you reception wise. So this is our river where we catch our fish. I go down the stairs. A walk. Hopefully, I don't lose you. These are beautiful. Can you still hear me? Can you see me?